I believe that this nation should commit itself to landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Indescribable. The Soviet cosmonaut has become the first to set foot on the moon. For all mankind, it's great. I love it. And not just because of the space nerd stuff, even though I am a huge space nerd. Usually in things like this, when they do the other, the character, emotional things, I'm like, yeah, fast forward to the next, like, rocket launch or whatever. You know, like Apollo 13, when you're following the, the wife, and it's like, yeah, the wife, to, uh. I like all the other crap. The stuff I usually am like, eh. Uh, and this, I love it. All of it's great. So this is going to be my uh, almost entirely spoiler-free review. Who should see it, etc. Get ready, let's do it. So if you're a space nerd, you love Apollo 13, The Martian, stuff like that, you're in, okay. If you like Tom Clancy's stuff, techno thriller, Hunt for October, Cold War thriller, that's for you too. Get in on it. So it's not just space nerd stuff, it's like a period piece, right? So we're talking race issues in the 60s. There's like a black astronaut, but they're dealing with like, am I just this diversity hire or do I really belong here? The bachelors of math and science. Perfect. She's in. Hang on. I'm not letting her in just because she's black. That's exactly why you're letting her in. I do not need Jesse Jackson up my ass. There's gay people who are like, do I hide my sexuality in order to advance my career in the space program? How does that work? Congratulations. As of this moment, you are officially astronaut candidates. Affectionately referred to from this point on as ass cams. <laughs> and I have to say that usually in a period piece like this, I often find it hammy, over the top, melodramatic, eye rolling kind of stuff. I'm not into it. But I really like it in this. Uh, it's just really well done, really good stuff. I almost cried several times. Almost, almost. I didn't, but almost. I almost cried several times. I'm not a big crier. It got me, okay? So, like, it's working, these emotional moments, these characters. Maybe my favorite character is uh, so there's the lady who's like the first female American astronaut. Uh, she's got a husband and we've already, you, you can imagine the the wives, the astronaut wives in the 60s, right? So, you know, they're all the like Betty homemaker making co cookies and raising the kids. And in comes Wayne, who's just, he's like a hippie painter. He's smoking weed and he's talking about feelings. He's out there, all these homemaker wives are just like, just, tight, squeeze, making diamonds out of their butts. You know what I'm talking about. Very, do, want to do another take on that? So I often find these like, oh, it's set in the 60s. So every character is going to say things that are like of the time, very eye rolling type stuff. It'd be like if, you know, a movie 50 years from now is set today. Well, this is just Joe Biden's America, I guess. Let's turn on that one Billie Eilish song that everyone's gonna remember 50 years from now and play that a lot while we play with our fidget spinners. It's all just like, no one talks like that. This isn't how it works. It's like in the movie The Doors when he's like, Vietnam is over there, man. Things are about to explode, Jim. You can feel it in the air. People wanna fight or fuck, love or kill. Vietnam is right out there, man. Sides are being chosen. Everything's gonna flame, man. The planet is screaming for change, Morrison. We gotta make the myths. I get it, man. Doors. I mean, the doors in your mind. Actually, man. doors of perception. Ass is great. It's like, no one talks like that. Anyway, For All Mankind, I think, does a good job avoiding those pitfalls. I'm a fan. Often in these period pieces, there's, this, you know, the race issues or uh, women in a man's world issues that I just find eye rolling and cringy or just like lazy like it's oh it's set in 1840 but our white cis male big chin main character kevin costner man uh he's gonna be the one guy who's like not racist and not sexist at all and it's just like uh like uh it's like vert is that virtue signaling so while there's a lot of space and cool and interesting space stuff it's mostly about these characters, this core set of characters, astronauts, their spouses, some children. We've got an uh, undocumented immigrant. We've got gay issues, race issues. Also, it's got great, like, the first season is late 60s aesthetic, and then season two is, like, early 80s. So it really places itself in these, uh, in these times, and it's, there's a lot of stuff that's, like, good to look at. 
more interesting. You know, the setting just really works. Overall, the show reminds me a lot of Halt and Catch Fire, which is another show that I thought went pretty under the radar. I really liked. Also has a similar like uh, progression of a sort of alternate history through a certain field, a certain technological field. So if you're into like Atari and bulletin boards and early internet search engines, it's sort of in that uh, Silicon Valley sort of like startups trying to make things. Anyway, Halt and Catch Fire, I really recommend. I thought it was really good. I want to build a computer that nobody else has the balls to build. Are you out of your mind? If it goes wrong, I'm a college dropout repairing VCRs for $3.25 an hour. IBM is going to liquidate this company because two idiots decided to rip off their flagship product. The future. The reason we're here in the first place. But now, it's our turn. For all mankind, surprised me. Several times I said aloud, I did not see that coming. Uh, in a good way. So, like, character moments that are like, well, I didn't see that coming. Uh, so no spoilers, I'm not going to spoil any of that, it's just, it's good. This is not the end of the race. We must keep our eyes to the future. Three, two. It's the Soviets on the moon, well what? So we have to move the goalposts because we got to win. This is why we had a moon race. Because if we had put the first man in space, America would have declared victory, it would have been over. But because Gagarin beats us, the Soviets are first, we're like, oh, well, actually, it was first to go to the moon. That was the real, you know, we're just moving goalposts all over the place. So in this world, Soviets are there first, so we, we're going to put some new goalposts, and it's like moon base, you know, we're, oh, we're going to be even Mars. So now it's like tons more funding. We're going to keep funding the space program. Military's getting involved. So this is an alternate history of different Apollo timeline, different space history. The point of divergence, the POD for you alternate history nerds, in uh, this one is Sergei Korolev doesn't die. He was the Russian version of like Warner von Braun, like the key rocket guy. In real life, he dies during a like minor surgery. And without him, they kind of lose their way a little. The N1 rocket, giant rocket, their Saturn V, they never get it to work. If Korolev lives, maybe they get it to work, and that's the point of Virgins here. Okay. Uh, but we started in 69 with the moon landing. It's a great place to start. It's a real pilot kind of moment, put it in the trailer kind of moment. There's other stuff like alternate history. There's this whole thing with like Ted Kennedy doesn't have the Chappaquiddick thing, so then like he later becomes president. John Lennon, his shop doesn't die, so he's like still alive in the 80s. So there's weird stuff, but for the most part, we're not really focused on stuff outside. It's just like astronauts and NASA people. So I just finished season two. Uh, it's great so far. Season three is already in production. Highly recommend one to two. Uh, season three looks good. Looks like it's going to be like an early 90s. There's a Nirvana song in the like teaser into the next season. So I'm waiting for that. I think it's going to be Kurt Cobain on, the, on Mars. I wish I had written this. If you're watching this and you work at Apple TV or or whatever. Hire me? Oh my god. I wish I had written this. I wish I'd have been involved. It's so like perfectly targeted at my brain specifically. There's some things that bug me. Technical things. I'm gonna get to that in part two. But for the most part it's like ah man. I'm one of those nerds that was into alternate space history of like well what if we did this with the Apollo program and then we didn't cancel the Saturn V. There are people that make alternate space history like alternate history forms of people like oh what if this didn't happen and then like here are all these consequences and diverges you know point of divergence key key term you gotta know for that. I'm one of those people that reads those things uh, and I at one point wrote an outline I was getting ready to write work on a project of an alternate Apollo space history that's not far off from this. I never did write it. I'll get into that in my story a little bit later on. So there are some technical critiques I have, in inaccuracies and so on. But to their credit, I think they probably know all of these or someone told them they chose to make these mistakes and accuracies. I think probably to get that nostalgia fix, like seeing the space shuttle flying to the moon, Pretty cool, gonna get some attention. I see that and think, this makes no freaking sense in the, at all, this is terrible. Uh, but I, I get it, I see why you would do it. So this probably isn't news to them, they don't need me to tell them. But I'm gonna do that now, an English professor is now going to correct you on your aerospace engineering technical details that you got all completely wrong. 
Rocket equations, let's do it. What did they get right? What did they get wrong? Also, why haven't we been back to the moon in almost 50 years? There are 12 dudes that walked on the moon. Only four of them are still alive and the youngest one's 85. Why? Why have we not been back? We figured out how to do this in the 60s. It's 2021, we haven't been back yet. How could this have gone differently? Alternate routes we could have taken, alternate space history. That's what For All Mankind's about. Let's do it. Wreck them up, knock them down. This program has the power to change the world. You need to remind them of Apollo 11. We came in peace for all mankind. Ready to fire. We need to live up to that. 